Kalimera, Kirieski Kirie, if we don't joke about people's handicaps, that's discriminating against those handicaps, isn't it? Uncle Sophocles thought so too, which is why he wrote his tragedy Oedipus Rex about this guy, Clubfoot. Uh, Oedipus. His name means swollen foot, because as a child, someone had pierced and bound his heels, which left some traces. Why? Well, that's the point. Anyway, at the play's outset, he's king of Thebes and married to Jocasta, who's a little elder than her hubby, but those are supposed to be good marriages, aren't they? They've got four children, only two of which crop up in the play, namely little Anti, Antigone, and little Issy, Ismini. If you want to get to know the others, watch Antigone to go. Then there's Creon, the queen's brother, who also kind of rules a bit in Thebes. As often happens in Greece, the royal house is a small family business, really. Before the play starts, King E had sent him to the oracle in Delphi because the plague has broken out in Thebes once more and they now need instructions from above or below how to deal with this. Tiresias is the old blind seer, always led by a boy, and as if being a blind seer wasn't enough, he's also kind of hermaphrodite. He has been both sexes, really. Some guys have all the luck. Moreover, there's an elderly messenger from Corinth, where people obviously wear war paint, and an even more elderly shepherd from the neighboring Kitiron Mountains. Those are the funny guys in the play. And of course, there's the chorus of Theban elderlies, whose main function is to hang around and mumble, I told you so, I've said it all along, in Greek. It is the mythical past in Boeotia, about an hour by car from Athens in Thebes, which attracted many tourists even in antiquity because it had seven gates. The tourist industry, however, was severely damaged by the presence of a fairy tale monster called Sphinx. Not a noseless and useless stone one like in Egypt, but a man-eating beast, if you couldn't answer the quiz question. That was very annoying to the Thebans, especially since tourism was the main source of income in Greece even then. At some point, however, young Oedipus came along and succeeded in the Sphinx's quiz, upon which the quiz master committed Harakiri for having failed in the job. The Theban Tourist Industry Association, however, crowned Oedipus king. This all happened a while ago. The new problem now is the plague, as I said. So the chorus goes, uh, Oedipus, what is it? So what do we do now about the plague? Shouldn't we really try out a sewer system? Oh, come on, a sewer system, all this modern nonsense. I've sent Creon to the Oracle. Ah, here he comes. So Creon enters and goes, Hi, Oedipus. Hi, brother-in-law. So... I've got good news. The plague thing is really simple to solve. We just have to find and punish the killer of your predecessor Laios and bang, Bob's your uncle. Uh, excuse me, this killer hasn't been persecuted? Uh, we had other stuff on our hands then, like the Sphinx. Okay then, let's clear up our city. I mean, have a look at this mess. So Oedipus now addresses the People's Assembly, that's the chorus in our case, and goes, Right guys, who killed Laios? Mm, no idea, haven't seen it. Why don't you ask the seer, Tiresias? Yeah, I've sent for him, probably an eyewitness, huh? The blind seer, har har. And Tiresias is maneuvered on stage by his boy guide. And Oedipus faces him, right, Tiresias, what's up? I wanna go home. Ah, be nice and tell me who'll kill Laios. I wanna go, shut it and spit it out or you won't get pudding. No, yes, king's orders. It was yourself. What? This is enough of your cheek. I'm the king around here. You yourself are the murderer you're looking for. Are you fucking around with me? Oh, wait a minute. Have you made this up with Creon? You are fucking around with me being blind, but you are the real blind one, you poor jerk. Hold on, it gets even worse. The murderer of Laios is also the husband of his own mother. And with these resonant words, he exits. Oedipus is now really pissed and goes off to the house when Creon comes and shouts, What was that? What am I supposed to have done? And Oedipus comes out again and goes, You made this up together with Ressi in order to bring me down. Are you stupid or what? I'm already reigning together with you. Why would I put around like this? Pull the other one. Head off. When Jocasta comes out and goes, What's up here? And for obvious reasons, they are all a bit depressed. And Creon then goes, Oedipus wants to have me executed because I'm supposed to have conspired against him. What? Why? Because of this stupid oracle. And she is relieved and goes to Oedipus, Edi, you can't rely on oracles. I mean, look, my first husband Laios was told he would be killed by his son, who would then marry me. And then he was killed by robbers at a crossroads. And the son we had, we killed before, see? And she strokes his hair until Oedipus suddenly goes, wait a minute, where was he killed at a crossroads? Well, it was at Phocis, but what's that to you? Phocis? Fuck, that was me. What? How many people were with him then? Not too many, right? Uh, like five? Oh no, you, you see, he cut me off and had a go at me and got violent, so I kind of slayed him by accident as well as four of his five servants. And she goes, no, 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 can't be. There was a survivor who told us it was robbers. 
We'll ask him, then we'll know it was not you. What were you doing there, by the way? Well, I was running away from home in Corinth because I had gotten an oracle saying I would kill my pop and marry my mum, which I didn't want. And being a teenager, I run away. So they all exeunt and the chorus goes, ho, 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 this is going to end badly. I told you so. You better stay honest, man. When a messenger enters and goes, hello, I'm a messenger. And he meets Jocasta and goes, hello, Queenie, I'm a messenger and I got some happy news for your hubby. Oedipus. Yeah? Hello, I'm a messenger from Corinth and the message is the king your father's dead and they want to make you his successor. And Oedipus goes, boah, that's a load off me because I can't have killed him then, can I? And the oracle was wrong. But I won't go to Corinth still because I don't want the second part of the oracle to come true and marry my mum. And to this the messenger replies, oh, don't you worry there. I mean, after all, she isn't your mum. Eh, uh, come again. Oh, I'm quite old, as you see, and I used to work as a shepherd around here at the Kitaron Mountains and brought you to Corinth as a foundling. A colleague of mine had picked you up and handed you over to me. And Jocasta goes, oh, 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 oh. Wow, that's him, my old pal and colleague. So the old shepherd enters and Jocasta recognizes him and goes, you were with my husband back then, weren't you? Uh, yes. Two questions. Who killed Laios and what did you do with the child we gave you? Oh, gods, yeah, I've always lied. So the kid I didn't abandon to be killed, but handed it over to that guy over there. And this guy over here, and now he points to Oedipus, killed Laios. Shit! Jocasta had gone off before seeing the bad coming, and now Oedipus follows her. And the old colleagues go, man, long time no see, let's have a red Zena at the pub, shall we? And they go off to the pub. Then a servant rushes out of the palace towards the chorus and goes, Oh, 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 Jocasta has hung herself. And when Oedipus saw this, he stabbed his eyes out with a needle of hers. Ouch. And then Oedipus enters once more, now eyeless and crownless. Right, at least I don't have to see all this mess any longer. Creon joins him, going, Oedipus, man, I'm so sorry. No, Creon, old pal, I'm sorry for doing you wrong. Here's the crown. And Creon dons the crown because he's his successor now. And now I'd like to be banned, please, because that's what I said would happen to the murderer of Laios. But I would like to take my daughters along, if that's okay. And the kids join him. Daddy, daddy, oh, auntie, Issy. And Creon goes, well, we'll have to ask the oracle for... Ah, uh, forget it. You can take them along if you want, but let's have a last coffee together. And while the leftovers of the royal family have a last frappe together, the chorus closes the play by saying, What do you know? Oedipus. Incredible, that guy. And this, dear congregation, was Oedipus Rex by Sophocles. <laughs> Vielen Dank. <laughs>